Hey everybody, it's Matt. I'm coming to you from SunTrust Park. As you can see, we've got the sky bridge behind me. It's a beautiful day. Kids playing on the fake grass here. But uh, beautiful park, uh, ready for some opening day Braves baseball. We're going to go inside here in a little bit and I'm going to take you around. All right, I just got dropped off at Power Alley. This is off of Windy Ridge Parkway and this alley goes down into the battery. Now the battery is a mixed use development that the Braves built to complement their ballpark and it is a perfect complement. There's restaurants, bars, shops, there's office buildings like the one to my left and there's also apartments and condos. Can you imagine living that close to your uh, favorite home team ballpark? Pretty cool but this is about a 50 yard walk so it's not too bad and it's a nice easy way to get to the park because parking can be expensive and a little bit strenuous but here's one of the shops the Mizuno store lots of sporting goods shoes bats baseballs sometimes they have autograph appearances lots of stuff down that way very cool and we're going to continue to walk to our left now that's the battery live it's a bar this is the on up experience it's like an interactive experience put on by SunTrust and we're walking towards like this courtyard area very cool this is like the main gathering spot for most people when they come to a game and it is one of my favorite spots and we'll show why in just a second but before we do we're going to look at the entrance to the stadium on that side where you see the park logo but on the other side of the street behind me you're going to see some food truck setups not every day they do that but they do on special occasions but this is the coca-cola roxy it's a nice little intimate theater now back in the courtyard, this is hanging up above your head. It's LED board baseball. And it's just so cool. They can put anything on there. The Braves like to celebrate their history. This is a built-in bench in the courtyard area. It celebrates our World Series titles and our National League pennants. We're hoping to add to this real soon, but we'll see if that happens. Inside the courtyard, you have the Terrapin Tap Room, the on-site brewery, and Fox Brothers Barbecue. It's very good. This is our courtyard made up of artificial turf. There's a concert stage. Kids like to come out here and throw the ball and just hang out. H&F Burger is amazing. This is the Chop House Gate, is the main gate into SunTrust Park, and it is a bottleneck, so avoid it if you can. Right Field Gate's a good choice. Um, and then if you remember the Coca-Cola Roxy, well, right across the street from that, you can get your tickets there. We don't need those, so we're going to continue on. This is the first of three statues that surround the ballpark. This is Bobby Cox, Hall of Fame skipper. And look at the detail. It looks just like him. I'm in awe every time I see these. It has a commemorative plaque, tells you about his achievements, tells you about the artist, and also tells you about the endowments that allowed the statue to be built. Now, if you continue walking down um, from the statue, you're going to come into an area that has these commemorative bricks. And these bricks you can purchase. You can put your name on them and have them there forever. The black bricks are actually celebrating past players of the Braves. Next up is the first base gate. And right behind that is the Delta Lot. The Delta Lot is the best parking in my experience in the stadium. At the third base gate you have our second statue of Phil Necro and he was a knuckleball pitcher and just a really cool guy so this is a left field gate and at the left field gate we have our third and final statue of warren spawn warren spawn played in the 40s and 50s phenomenal pitcher with braves winning his pitcher and just amazing detail on these statues i'm in awe every time i'm in front of them but they're very nice So Dave Justice stopped by the On Up Experience to sign some autographs today, and he was the 1995 World Series hero. He hit the game-winning home run for the Braves. So we did get something signed by David, and we'll be giving that away at the end of the video. Stay tuned for details. It's very easy, and we look forward to giving away. Okay, I finally made it into the stadium, and here we're watching the Cubs take batting practice. One of the best things about our ballpark is we have a real organist that plays baseball organ music and it is awesome so I'm just gonna let you enjoy batting practice and listen to him play
One of the awesome things that the Braves have done since moving to SunTrust Park is parade the players into the stadium on opening day. They're being led in by the heavy hitters, they're a drum line, and they have some break dancers that work with them, but here come the players and coaches right behind them. Brian Snicker, last year's manager of the year. Then you have Freddie Freeman, Ron Washington, Nick Markakis. I think I see Josh Donaldson back there, yep. And it just goes on and on. Now, something I didn't notice until I was editing was Dansby Swanson seemed to be in a really bad mood. I didn't know why, but then I saw somebody grab him right here. I'd be in a bad mood, too. But anyway, this is so neat, and most of the fans are very respectful. The players get it. They love it. Uh, here you see Charlie Culberson slapping fives, Johnny Venters. This is just the right way to do things and it's a good way to introduce the players to the fan. Here's Ronald Acuna Jr. not too big for the moment and Blooper, Indira Inciarte and Ozzy Albies. The only two players that were not in this line that are on an active roster were Sean Newcomb the starting pitcher and Brian McCann the starting catcher. I finally made it to my seat and I'm greeted by Blooper, the team's mascot, riding his ATV. I really didn't like Blooper at first, but he's kind of grown on me. He's really good at what he does. He's entertaining and he's kind of like our Philly fanatic, if you will, but he's fun. Yes, it's opening day. We're getting ready to play this game. Let's go. Now this is the ceremonial first pitch. You have Braves Hall of Famer Terry Pendleton throwing a perfect strike to Eddie Perez. Shortly after the first pitch, the Braves take the field, running through the center field gates, down a red carpet onto the field. Then they'll go across the diamond. You'll see the Cubs players lined up on the third baseline. The Braves will then take their position on the first baseline, and this is for player introductions. Now what's funny about this is the Braves really didn't do anything for the Cubs, like they didn't announce any of the extended roster's names. They did the starting lineup, but that was it. But funny enough, the Braves have to remember what order they're in, and it was kind of funny watching them trying to get an order, but they did, and they got it figured out, and the announcer did a wonderful job uh, announcing all the new players and introducing the team to the fans. This is a cool way to introduce a team, and they do this for opening day, they do it for the 4th of July, sometimes they do it for the All-Star Game, World Series, very special events, and it is like a tradition in baseball. This is a ceremonial flag unveiling in center field. It's one of my favorite parts of opening day. I'm just going to let you listen to this and watch the flyover. Sean Newcomb held the Cubs to zero runs in the first, and then the Braves got off to a bang with a leadoff home run by Ender Inciarte in the bottom of the first. They would go on to score another three runs in that inning, making it four to nothing due to some Cubs sloppy defense. The fireworks weren't over. Ronald Acuna Jr. hit his first home run of the season, and it was an absolute rocket into left field. This dude is amazing. He's one of the most charismatic players I've ever seen play, and it's a pleasure to watch him, and he'll be here for a while. As far as in-game promotions go, the Braves have some of the best. This is their version of the promotional race. This is called the Home Depot Tool Race. You got Hammer and Hank, B Rush, Fill the Bucket, and Two Bit the Drill. Now, poor Two Bit the Drill never wins. They always pick on him. Sometimes he wins at the end of the season, sometimes he doesn't, but usually you can count on him losing. And this is the kind of stuff they do to him. Set him up and boom, knocked him down. And then you're going to see Hammer and Hank go on to take the prize and celebrate with Blooper. Just a fun thing. I've seen people bet on this. The kids have fun with it. It's a great promotion. Next up is the coolest promotion in all of sports. This is called Beat the Freeze. Olympic hopeful Nigel Talton is the freeze, and he is just super fast. Check this out.
another easy victory for the freeze. In the middle of the seventh, you're going to be blessed by the sounds of Timothy Miller. He is amazing. Enjoy. Baseball fights are so lame. One of the coolest things that happens now at the Braves games is the night shot. Check this out. So here the Braves are celebrating after a hard fought victory against the Cubs. Go Braves! So the Braves won eight to nothing. Cubs played a really sloppy game. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. There was a matter of a giveaway. We're giving away our David Justice signed Beckett magazine. Amazing. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel. We'll pick a random subscriber once we reach 100 subs.